end. It is currently 7.30 p.m. as of this broadcast, which means that Heart of the Swarm comes out in America in about four and a half hours. The official Blizzard launch is 90 minutes away. If you are in the Southern California area, start heading there now. Things kick off promptly at 9 p.m. Now, before we're going to be closing out, this community portion of the launch event, we have an extra special guest, the wonderful, the lovely, Robert Clotworthy. Robert, how are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much, Sean. Now, Good for any of you who are unfamiliar with the amazing Robert Clotworthy, one of the many talented voice mm -hmm. actors, part Thank of StarCraft you. II, who do you do the voice of? Let me think. It's not Mengsk. It's not Zeratul. Oh, I remember one of the lines I said. This is Jimmy. How about that? Some yeah. things are just worth fighting for. Jim Rayner. Jim Rayner in the flesh, ladies and gentlemen. He's right to my left, and now we're going to ask him things. Let's so go. I want to actually start off at the beginning of your career, because you've been a voice actor for a long time now. Yeah, yeah. Since Lincoln was in office, it's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so over, over your 160-year over your career... <laughs> yes. I mean, when you, when you before video was a thing, and you were, you know, you know doing Lincoln actually was much taller than you would think. You know, yeah, he was a very tall man. And you would read yeah. his letters to yeah, him. Yeah, yes, exactly. That would be his it. administration. Wouldn't that be funny? That would be cool. I, I guess that was like the first voice actor. He would yeah. like read the correspondence. Yeah, someone, someone who had blurry vision and they hadn't invented contacts <laughs> and wanted to wear glasses because his nose was, there I don't know, know, blown off by a cannon or something, so he just couldn't see well. And he would want someone with your voice talent to read, you know, like you haven't paid your electricity bill. It was a pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> so w w when did you get started doing voice acting? Um, well, my father was in advertising. He was a producer of uh, radio commercials. So as a kid, I used to go down to a lot of the recording sessions that he would have with, at that time, some of the top... Uh, you know, cartoon voices and voice mm -hmm. talent that, that I grew up with. And I became enamored with that particular area of, of the business. I thought, wow, these people are having a lot of fun. And uh, it's certainly talented at what they're doing. They're getting paid. Mm -hmm. It sounded like a great thing to get into. So basically when I turned 15, I started working on camera. I started doing commercials and doing a lot of TV shows. And it was like a natural segue for me to get into to voice acting at that mm -hmm. point. And especially in the last, I want to say, 10, 15, 20 years, it's really taken off and blown up big time. And uh, StarCraft just happens to be, I guess, the, uh, the icing on the cake, the, 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 the cherry on the top of the sundae, the, <laughs> the, the, the most fun job you could possibly imagine. Well, I mean, how did, how did you actually get involved with StarCraft? I mean, were you doing other games at that time? Because I mean, yeah, voice acting no, actually, in games was really new then. Actually, it was the first game that I ever did, and, and uh, my wife was uh, was good friends with a fellow that worked over, I guess it was Blizzard at that time, because it was 97, so I owe her uh, a, a ton for, for inviting me, or in, introducing me to him, and he brought me down to, to Blizzard, where I got to meet with Chris Metzen, and I basically just auditioned for, for the game. And Chris sat down with me, showed me some of the original drawings that he had, and uh, the, you know the concept art, and where he thought the game was going to go, and the story. And we played around with the character of Rainer a little bit, mm -hmm. and worked on the, the vocalization, and I ended up getting the job. Well, actually, if, if I could ask, what is that process like when you're talking about you know working on the vocalization? I mean, I, I assume you don't show up to an audition with a set of pre-prepared voices and you're like, here is the what no, you can choose from. Like, how does that work? You know, with, with something like, uh, like StarCraft, since I had absolutely no idea what, it, what I was getting myself into, there was no, uh, you know, there was no cartoon that I was trying to emulate or anything like that. It was, it was something totally fresh. So uh, it, it was a matter of just kind of looking at the character and, making, and asking Chris about him. What, what motivates this guy? Where is he coming from? What's... What's he do for a living? What's you know, all the simple questions you would ask just, just to begin starting to understand the character. And when we started vocalizing, then we started working on the script and kind of playing with, with some of the vocal placement. What would work for that character? You know, is he going to have a high voice? Is he going to have a lower voice? Is he going to have a little bit of, a, of, a, of an accent to it? Then you start getting into little, little detail work like that. Yeah. And we ended up uh, getting into something that we both felt comfortable with. So you, you know, were involved like at the ground floor of Rainer. Oh, I, I, coming into existence. Oh, yeah, you were yeah, there yeah, at the yeah, birthing yeah. of Rainer. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, I remember quite well sitting there with Chris, and he was, sh I, he might have even pulled it out of a notebook. <laughs> you know, the stuff, the stuff that's now, you know, sitting in the wall at, at Blizzard that's, yeah. you know, protected like the Mona Lisa with bulletproof <laughs> glass. This was the stuff, this was his doodles, this was his sketches of, you know, this is Rainer on, on the Vulture Bike. 
and it was that one where he's kind of like leaning back and kind of oh looking, yeah and he has a, cool. he has yeah. a cigar that's bigger than yeah. my forearm yeah yeah and and I thought oh my god this is gonna be fun to play and um, that's so that's that's kind of how it begins and it just kind of uh -huh. evolves from that so I mean it, in recording mm -hmm. obviously games are have that non-linearity to them. I mean, especially right. that was explored right. in right. StarCraft II a lot, but I mean, at the time with StarCraft One, was there a lot of differences in recording voice for a game versus you know, something more traditional at that time, like TV or commercial? Yeah, I mean, what happens when, you, when you're working on a game, it's uh, oftentimes it's way out of context. You, you really don't know what's, what's happening. And they're, and they're recording, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, which is a, a, a positive and a negative. I mean, it's, it's good in that, uh, you know, it's it's fresh, it's new, but at the same time you're going, I, I have no idea where I'm going as an actor. Because you want to be able to at least somewhat prepare so that you can set, you know, if there's going to be a moment where something intense happens, you want to make sure you set it up properly. Mm -hmm. So that's where you need the, the director, you know, somebody like Chris or, or somebody like Andre Romano to tell you what this means. You know, because it could be a simple line like, I see your Tychus, Tychus Finley over there. Yeah, you know that's that, he's so boss. That, that turncoat, and when you have a line <laughs> like where he, where he says, where Jimmy says, "Tychus, what have you done?" Right now, God, that was <laughs> that was so cool. It's well, well, well also it's kind of it's kind of nice in voice acting. You don't really have to give a whole heck of a lot as far as intensity. By him internalizing that and saying it very very quietly, it kind of draws you in. Now, when when I'm given that line, I don't know what I'm referring to what has Tychus done you know is it something good is it something bad somewhere somewhere in the middle so that's where the director says no this is what's happened your best friend has you know turned on you and he's he's about to kill the woman that you love and so it's that moment so as an actor you start thinking all right and this is why I don't like to see the script in, in advance because I like to really? rely on that gut feeling that that first reaction of this is what's happened to this character. How would I react in that situation? How would I feel if all of a sudden here I am, literally, you know, 12 inches away from everything I've battled for in my entire life, and it's about to be taken away, and it's going to be taken away by my best friend. I mean, the sense of betrayal. Yeah, all that yeah. stuff kind of comes up, comes to you. That's why the line is said very simply, and then it's a matter of what is Jim going to do at that moment in time. And a lot of people... Uh, are, are, are realizing that the gun that he uses is the gun that he put the one bullet in to get Max. So he had to make a lot of oh, choices in dude. that moment. Yeah, it's heavy, isn't oh, it? Dude, I didn't. It's, in, it's, it's yes. I've been I've been like in doing esports stuff for too long. I got to replay the single player. <laughs> you got to get into it. Yeah. Well, I mean, because like, I know that you know having been Jim Rayner in yeah. original StarCraft and, of course, StarCraft Brood War. Yeah. And then a decade later, StarCraft II comes mm -hmm. out. And you said that you don't read the script. Is that yeah. is that difficult sometimes going in there? I don't mean, like, difficult in terms of, you know, can you do it? But, I mean, is it difficult to be like, oh, my God, this is this is what's happening to Jim? Because, obviously, you're showing up well, in a character you have a lot of investment in. Yeah, I mean, like, like I like to tell people, I, if, if I wasn't playing the role of, of Rayner, if I wasn't in the game, I'd be a fan of the game. Yeah, I mean, I really, really enjoy it. I think the storyline is incredibly compelling and fascinating. So, I have a, I have an investment in the character as well. You know, as a fan, I want him to do well. And mm -hmm. when you see that things are turning against him, you know, he's going to have a tough time. I, 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 you know, I, part of me wants to kind of help him out a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of kind of weird that way. But uh, if, it was, if it was really difficult to do as an actor, you probably wouldn't be hired. You know, part of the reason that you're hired is, is that you're able to deliver. So that when you show up mm -hmm. on the, uh, the recording stage, first of all, with, with a game like this, uh, we have all the time in the world that we need to get it right. There's no pressure. It's not like, listen, Robert, you've got to get you know, 38 lines out in the next half hour. So <laughs> let, let's just burn through it. And that happens sometimes when you're working on, on different games. But this one, it's no. If, if we do... You know, two or three lines, and it takes four hours, but those two or three lines are exactly right, then everybody's happy. Because the, the main thrust here is to get the game as good as we possibly can. I think that's everybody's mindset. I know it's Chris Metzen's mindset, it's Blizzard's mindset, yeah, it's, yeah. it's everybody that's working on it. So everybody is, a, is of a like mind. So I, I, I'm curious about, in the StarCraft II single mm -hmm. player, there's a lot of either-or situations that you can end up in right. with the gameplay uh, that result in different situations mm -hmm. that, of course, are 
likewise voice acted differently. Is that a sort of weird experience to do one scene where something traumatic happens, then back up and be like, okay, let's redo it if the player oh, chose no, no, to no, save no, so-and-so, no, no, or is no, it? No, it, it really isn't, because one of the things, uh, you know, as an actor, it helps to be a, a tad schizophrenic. <laughs> Although, so yeah, so you know, it's like change gears. You know, you love them. Okay, I love them. Now you hate them. Okay, I can hate them. That's easy. You know, you just you just turn the switch and you access that that part of you that allows you to go there. It, it's 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 like you casting. If it was difficult for you to cast, if it was a if it was a battle every time you did it, it was challenging. I, I would be an idiot for being where I am right well, now. Yeah, I, yeah. I, why, why am I torturing myself it, like exactly, that? Exactly. You'd be miserable. It has to be. You have to obviously put in the work to get to the point of where it's easy, but then once you're doing it, it's usually pretty simple. It may be challenging at, at times, at moments, but it's exciting. You're having a good time, and that's basically what we're doing as actors. I mean, going in there and playing Rainer, I tell people, being the voice of Jim Rainer doesn't suck. <laughs> I mean, honestly, you know, come on. I mean, or as Jimmy would say, it don't suck. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, with Heart of the Swarm coming out, obviously there a lot of people are super excited for the single-player yeah, campaign yeah. to sort of find out what happens. I asked... Oh, I'll tell you everything. Well, <laughs> just... Not, don't, <laughs> don't, not yet. No, they'll, they'll be so mad. Yeah, we've got to hold out for another few hours. You know, I, I, asked, I asked James Harper this, mm -hmm. and then he died. Um, but, is, I mean, is there any particular moment that you're really excited for that you want to hint at or tease? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, already Europe, Asia already have Heart of the Swarm on their hands. Oh, they're so lucky, aren't they? They are, they are lucky. and I'm upset at them. However, well, we here in America, I'll we tell just you, want that I, tease. I spoke to Chris uh, a few months ago before I went down to one of the MLG tournaments in, in uh, Anaheim, and I asked him if he had anything that he wanted me to say to, to the fans, and he said, tell him that Jimmy ain't done dispensing justice. So I'll leave it at that. Jimmy ain't done dispensing justice. How does that sound? That is... That is awesome. And of course, sincerest of eulogies to James Harper. He had a good run. <laughs> but he's not with us anymore. <laughs> well, well it's, it's, it's sad, isn't it? But <laughs> he died a good death. Robert, thank you so Pleasure. much for taking thank the opportunity. So Guys, thank you. Big round of applause again for Robert Clotworthy. Raiders roll. Yeah. And some things are just worth fighting for. Hashtag vengeance. <laughs> Hashtag yes. I'm seriously, I, I, I am uh, incredibly excited for the single player campaign. When I get back from MLG, that is all I will be doing. For now, there is about one hour left of the community launch party. Stay tuned. Husky and I are going to be closing it up and getting ready to head out. So without any further ado, we're going to step away to a brief break. We'll see you in about 30 seconds.